Hey everybody, I want to talk a little bit today about the autoplay policy in Google Chrome and why it actually is so critical to know about if you want to use the Web Audio API correctly. You see, the developers at Google decided to implement this new autoplay policy in order to help deliver a better user experience. A lot of us would probably agree that if you went to a website and, and all of a sudden just got an unexpected blast of sound come at you, you'd probably be really annoyed. And that's the whole purpose of this autoplay policy in Google Chrome, to prevent that bad user experience. This ultimately really got launched and implemented in browsers at the end of 2018, although they tried to implement it a little bit earlier, and a lot of developers ended up getting annoyed because it actually went and broke their code. So then they went and reverted back to the old way for a little while so developers could have more time to prepare and adjust their code accordingly. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to work with this autoplay policy and make sure that users receive this audio experience that you're trying to deliver. Now here in our app.js file, we have an audio context created on line one. We have an oscillator created on line three here, and we're connecting that oscillator to the destination or your speaker's outputs. Now let's come over to Google Chrome. We'll come over to the dev tools here in the console. And let's refresh the page and see what happens. So you can see here, we get a warning. It says the audio context was not allowed to start. It must be resumed or created after a user gesture on the page. So what is this user gesture they're talking about? Well, basically what this is saying is that the user needs to interact with the page in some way in order to take the audio context out of a suspended state and to put it into a running state. You see, by default, even though we've instantiated an audio context in our code, the Chrome browser will put the audio context in a state of suspension by default. So we need to proactively do something in our code that responds to a user interaction or a user gesture in order to get that audio context started. And that user gesture can be something like a click, for example. Like let's say that you're using the Web Audio API to create a synthesizer. Well, user gesture can be a click on a key of the keyboard, for example. Or maybe you have an on-off toggle type switch on the keyboard, and the user can click on that to start the audio. It can really be any DOM element like that that we go ahead and add an event listener to. And that event listener is going to respond by taking the audio context out of a suspended state. So hang in here for a minute, because I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in code. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to console.log the state property on the context object. So let's save that and take a look in the dev tools again. So here we can see, like I mentioned, that the audio context is in a state of suspension or suspended here by default. And then let's take a look at the context object itself, just so we can see that that state property does live on the context object. So we take a look here in our audio context object, and as you can see, we have a state property with a value of suspended. What if we went ahead here and we called the start and stop method on the oscillator node? Like so. We'll have the oscillator start immediately and stop after two seconds. So let's save the file and take a look in the Chrome DevTools again. And here we can see the audio context was not allowed to start, the same warning message we were getting before. So let's try something here. Let's come into our HTML file and let's create a button element. And let's just give it a text content of play. And then in our JavaScript file, let's go and grab that button from the DOM. We'll assign it to a const, const btn for button equals document.query selector. And we'll grab the button. And then let's go ahead and add an event listener to that button. And that event listener is going to listen for a click event. And then we'll write a callback function. And in this callback function, what we're going to do is we're going to call that resume method on the audio context object. So we'll say ctx.resume. And this resume method is going to return a promise object. So what we can do is we can call then on it. And here we're going to pass in a function that's going to console.log the context.state so we can see how the state changes after we call the resume method on the context object. 
So what should happen now once we save this file is we'll have a button in the browser window and when the user clicks on that button, the audio context will resume. That is, it'll be taken out of a suspended state. Our oscillator should start and stop after two seconds and we should also see in the console the new state reflected. So let's try that out. So here's our play button up here and let's go ahead and click on it and see what happens. So as you can hear, the tone was triggered to play for two seconds, and now we see our new state here in the DevTools, running. Now there's a slightly different way we can do this as well, and the way that you decide to do it will depend on your situation and your specific application that you're building. But what we can do is, instead of calling context.resume in here when the user clicks, we can put that oscillator start, and we'll put the stop, directly here in the event listener's callback. And this should actually have the same effect. Once the user clicks on the button, that'll take the audio context out of suspension and put it into a state of running. One other thing we can do here is, on the oscillator node, there's actually a property called onEnded, and we can assign this to a function that'll run once the oscillator stops playing. And let's go ahead and do this here so we can console.log out the new state of the context object. So we'll do console.log ctx.state. So let's go ahead and save the file. Let's go back to the browser window and let's click play. And again we hear that two second tone and you can see in the dev tools that the state has been changed to running. And one very last thing that I want to show you is that we can create the audio context itself within the callback function of the event listener. So instead of having it out here we can comment all this out, and as you can see, what will happen is when the user clicks, that's what's going to instantiate a new audio context and trigger all of this functionality. And like I said before, this all is really going to depend on your specific application and how you see it best to write your code. So let's go ahead and save this, and just make sure it works as well in the browser. And at first you'll see nothing here in the DevTools because we didn't try to instantiate an audio context outside of the scope of that callback function. But let's go ahead and click play. And again we heard the tone and we can see that the state is now running in the DevTools. So hopefully now you know what this autoplay policy is all about and how to make sure that the end user is actually going to be able to hear the audio that you create in the browser. We talked about two main methods on the audio context object, the suspend method and the resume method. The suspend method is the one that's just enabled by default, and the resume method is the one that we can write to get ourselves out of that suspended state. And this will be triggered by a user action, like a button click. So that's all for this one. So if you got something out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like, and consider subscribing to the channel so you can get more videos like this. Cheers!